ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello there, my fellow FileMaker developers and learners. This is Matt Pachowski bringing you yet another FileMaker tutorial video from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this video tutorial, we're taking a look at a very simple user interface messaging system. This is a great way to give your users some feedback within your FileMaker solutions. Let's take a look at the file and see what I'm talking about. All right, so here we are on my desktop. You can see that we've got the file right here, and we are going to go through the simple user interface messaging that we have here. I've got three buttons on my screen. You can see those right there, run my script, timed message, and a critical error. So the great thing about this solution is that it uses one simple object that you can copy and paste to your layout. We'll be taking a look at that when we break things down, and it's basically a button bar. And how you interact with this button bar within your scripts completely up to you, but I do have some pre-formatted systems. So let's run my script. So our script would normally do something. We can see that in the dialog here. We would be processing something, maybe looping through records, uh, whatever your script does. I've got two options here. I can succeed or fail. Now when I click succeed, we're going to see that a message comes up on screen. This right here is the button bar. Now what's really great about this system is that you're going to see when we use the timed message right here that we can do this on a timed fashion and it shows for the user and then goes away or we can force user interaction. Now obviously a dialog box is modal and that forces user interaction. You can also use a card window. But what I really like about this is it's a little bit more discreet in terms of what's going on. And you can see right here I say click here to dismiss. So simply just clicking this gets rid of it. So what it does is it forces the user to acknowledge the message that came on screen. Let's go ahead and run that again. This time we'll fail, and we can see that we've got a different message. Again, we need to simply click here to dismiss, but at least we forced the user to read this when it comes to errors. Now, if we don't need the user to actually interact with this message and get some acknowledgement, sort of stop their workflow, which from a user interface standpoint, sometimes you want to stop the user from their workflow, sometimes it's a little bit uh, disruptive and you don't. We can also do this in a timed fashion. So as I click this here, you can see that the message shows up on screen and then simply goes away. And then finally, we've got our critical error. If we have something that comes up, such as a very bad thing in our solution, which our scripts will sometimes need to determine, we can force the user to actually take action, which we're doing right here, and when they click this, we would then take them to a place where they can resolve the error. Maybe this is a help screen based on a help layout, or it goes to a web page, or it takes the user to an event log, which is what I do in a lot of my uh, FileMaker solutions. I take them and show them what was the issue that I hit so that they can try to resolve it themselves or then further email it to myself. And that's what we're going to be breaking down. How is this implemented? It's really pretty simple, and that's what we're going to take a look at right now. All right, so what is the most simple part of this whole solution? Well, as I go into layout mode, it is this right here. One simple object, that's all this is. It is a button bar with each of the different possible iconic representations of messages that you would want to display. So we can see right here, we've got three different segments. In fact, that's how a button bar comes by default. And I basically just have the three most common errors, or I should say messages, which include uh, an info icon, a warning icon, and then a stop icon. And I've simply colored each of them. Now the coloring is pretty simple. That's just simply coming from our uh, conditional formatting right here. And we just put on a formula is true. You can see right there as I've hovered, it says the formula is true. Let's take a look at that. We'll right click on that, choose our conditional formatting. That will come up. Let me zoom out right here so we can get the whole dialogue on screen. We'll zoom in again and back that off a little bit. You can see right here, I'm simply just saying that the formula is true, and because it's true, we are going to apply the colors that we want, and that includes colors for text, fill, and icon. And that's all that it is. It's just that simple for each of these. So for the warning, I'm just gonna use a different, co uh, different colors. You can see that they've got an orange color there. And of course, for the error, we're going to, going to see that we're using red with white. No big deal right there. Now, of course, you can, as I double click here and uh, get my button bar HUD, 
you can add as many of these as you want. So if you have more than just your standard three, info, warning, and, uh, and stop sign, you simply just add a new item. So how is it that we get the message in there? Well, we can see right there as I was zoomed in that this is just a global variable. That's it. In fact, these are reserved global variables. You don't want to use them anywhere else in the rest of your scripting or in your application. And there is simply just one for each of the different types. I use this prefix right here of interface.message. Now, if that's a little long for you, you can just use message. You can call, use ui.message. You can use any type of format that you want for global variables that fit your system. I like to use something that really is descriptive and also something that's not going to collide with the way that I use variables in my scripting and calculations. Now you're going to see that I'm on two of three right now. Let's move to one. You can see that one is dot info, two is dot warn, as is the icon. And then what do you think three is? Of course, it's going to be dot error. So in my scripts, as we're going to see, all I have to do is simply just issue whatever message I want to say into the global variable, respective of the level of warning or level of message that I want to give the user. If I give them an info, I'm writing to the global variable for info. If I'm giving them a warning, then I'm writing to the global variable for warn, and that's pretty simple. Now what this causes is a really good system of stacking. So for example, if you had an informational message and the user also experienced an error, you can stick messages both into the info and into the error and what we'll show is the error should show first, I think I've coded it that way, and then once they dismiss the error and they come back, the warning is still there. Now all of this is controlled by the visibility. So when we look at the bar as a whole and we take that in, we're going to select first without clicking a second time. When we click a second time, it grabs the, um, the actual segment of the bar. So I'll click off of that and now just click the whole bar. We, of course, anytime that we show something on screen, we need to be able to control or refresh that. So first off, we need to give this object a name. So here in the first area of the inspector, the position tab, we can see that we have a name of bar.interface.message. So in my scripts, I'm, of course, going to be using the refresh object step, as we will see. But beyond that, for each individual item, we need to control its visibility. We can see that with the hide right there. And as I turn off my highlight, we can see that this one is running basically a test to determine whether or not it has content itself. And each one simply just does roughly the same thing. As I hover here, you'll see that it's pretty much the same. Let's go take a look at that in the calculation itself. We will go select this segment now, go to the fourth area of our data tab, and then down here, I'll go ahead and collapse. We are going to see right here, hide object when, and we'll go ahead and get that, bring that up, because there's a little bit more right there. On each of these, it just looks like this. So if there is no content, if I'm empty myself, meaning I have nothing to show, then I am going to hide, and that will hide. And also, we are going to hide if these are not empty as well. So in other words, we want, to, we want that cascade. We want the error to show and then the warn and so forth. So if any of these have values in them, then we are going to hide it. So if not as empty, the inverse being, if we have a value in either error or warning, then the info is going to display, not display, or this is going to hide. So that's what causes our cascade. So we cascade with the uh, critical error being the highest or most important, then down to this one, then down to this one. And I think that's what we're going to see on the hide settings for this. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one right there. You can see that as we cascade up, this one needs to respect that this one and this one, if they have values, should cause him to hide. He should really only hide if this guy has a value, and we can see that right there, the or not empty. So it's a really nice cascade in terms of being able to stack up your errors. So if you do add additional uh, messages in here with new icons, then you just need to follow that cascading order. 
So the rest of it now is just up to how you want to implement. And implementing within your scripts is couldn't be simpler. It is really so simple that each item, all you have to do is set that global variable. We're going to take a look at that, but just before we do, we need to see how do we actually dismiss the dialog. So when, when we're in here and we click and we get a success, how do we dismiss this without having to have an extra script? Well, that's pretty easy. I like the single step method of dismissing things. So we'll double click back, go back into our button bar HUD. And you can see right here that we are simply running a single step. We're not performing a script because we don't want to add a script that really isn't necessary because for this, the user interaction, all we need to do is get them to acknowledge the message that we've shown on screen. And by doing that, we can simply use the single step with a refresh object. And now when I bring this up, what's really nice about this, and I love doing this technique, is because the message itself hinges off of a global variable, I can take advantage of the let function right here in order to clear that global variable. And we can see right here that we are inevitably going to refresh an object, and that object is the bar.interface.message. Again, something you can shorten. But I'm simply taking the opportunity within this calculation to reset my global variable and set it to nothing. So I have now told it, FileMaker, you're going to run a single step. That single step says I'm going to set a variable, a global variable, which is the calculation that displays on the button, to nothing and refresh that so that it goes away because it hides when it is empty itself. And it's really, I love things that are super sublime like this in terms of how they work. So the last part of what we need to understand is how can we use this in the context of our scripts? Let's take a look at that, look at the timed message, and also how we would invoke a event log or take the user to a help page or do whatever. All right, so here we are in our scripts. And um, if your scripting workspace does not look like mine because of this, uh, all of these icons, that is the Monkey Bread plugin I am using. It's a plugin that you can install for free and get free syntax highlighting, but it's also very valuable in terms of all of its functionality. So let's take a look at our scripts. The first one, we've got my script. This is the most simple implementation of this UI messaging. As I back this off a little bit here, my script would be doing something, it would be processing, running through some scripts, and then there would be an outcome, either positive or negative. So in this case, I've got a success variable that I am using a choose function to just basically pull off the value of the button that the user clicked. And then here is basically how simple it is. It is a two line script anytime that you want to get a message on screen, you're simply just setting that variable of whichever one you want. So in this case, I, uh, I'm, if it was successful, I'm going to set the info uh, version of the button bar. If it wasn't, then I'm going to set the warn with the associated message. And the only other thing that I need to remember is to refresh the object. And that's it. Two steps in order to get a really nice and effective, powerful uh, UI messaging to the user. So beyond that, we then have the situation where we want to run a timed message, where we just want it to show on screen for a short period of time and then go away. Because some messages we do not, we want to give the user feedback, but we do not want to inter interrupt their flow. So that's pretty easy. What we've done is we've set up a uh, UI message right here. Here is the script that does that one. Let's take a look at that. So as I back this off, we can see this purpose is to show a temporary UI message. First off, I am using JSON in order to pass these values in. We will see that when we look at the timed message script. We are determining whether this JSON is valid. This is the only custom function that is uh, necessary for this technique if you want to use this. You, of course, can validate this without the custom function. Just look at what the custom function says that JSON is valid. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. It's really pretty simple. All you're doing is you're using the JSON get element or the JSON format elements, anything that basically processes the JSON within FileMaker and then looking at whether or not the very first character is a question mark, which is what FileMaker returns when there is an error. So that's really simple. You could put that directly in the script and make this a solution where you can copy and paste this one script without the custom function. 
Um, these are the three values that I'm pulling off of that JSON. What is the message? What is the level? In other words, uh, let's start at, let's assign numbers. And uh, you could use 0, 1, 2, or 1, 2, 3. Um, I think I used 1, 2, 3. Or you can pass in a level that is the name of the level that you want. Set variable uh, level, JSON level. Yeah, uh, that we're pulling the level off. And then finally, we have duration. So right here, you can see that in terms of the scripting, I know that the default is always going to show something if I have a message. So in this case, the default is the info message. Otherwise, I'm going to have a warning or an error. So you can see that I've rather than starting with the info, I sort of, sort of start in reverse. In fact, I could have had the uh, go error, then warning, then info. But uh, in my speed, I guess I just mixed the two and I did warning error info. So if that doesn't flow well for you, just switch this these two right here. And then finally, we're always going to refresh the object. Here we're going to pause and resume just for the duration that we have coming inbound. If it's two seconds, three seconds, whatever you pass in, that's what it's going to do. And then finally, what we need to do at the bottom there is we need to clear it out. So after we've shown it for the duration, we then are just going to clear things out and we are going to refresh this. Now, one of the interesting things is I could have done this right here where all of these were uh, all in sequence, but I don't want to do that because remember, one of the things that I mentioned was this system is really good at cascading. If you have a error message and you show that error message, but stacked behind it is an info message, then you want to leave that alone. So rather than just clearing everything right here, what I did is I simply split those out to match the setting of them to match the, for the clearing to be the same. So a very important thing. And that's pretty much what a timed message is. When we look at the time message, you can see how simple it is. We're just calling a perform script UI message. And then we are passing the JSON elements of what we want it to do. I want you to use the level of info, and I believe I could have also put a value of one if I wanted to, but I just chose to also have a human readable version. Um, the message of whatever message you're gonna send, and then the duration in terms of seconds, and that's it. Pass those three values to time message, and that script will then run that, show it for the duration, and then dismiss. Very cool in terms of being able to use. And then the last and final thing that we have for this is when we look at, in layout mode, when we look at that final bar right there and we double click that one, as opposed to the two that are right here, we are in this particular case running a perform script. And that script is the event log that we are running. So in this case, what I'm saying is in my solution, if I hit a critical issue, I really want the user to be able to resolve that because a critical programming issue is something that uh, probably is a problem that I need to fix and I need to get the feedback back to me as the developer. When we take a look at how I'm handling that, you of course can tie whatever you want into the script. But here we can see that in my event log, what I'm doing is take the user to your event log or some type of resolution layout. So in here, I can see that I am currently showing a dialog, but normally in my solutions, I take the user to a completely different layout. It gives them an event log of what's happened, shows the most recent error message, and then within that layout, they also have a little button where they can uh, say submit bug. And then that will uh, automatically email it or open up a, a web page and pre-fill a form and uh, have all of the information that I need that allows the feedback loop in order to get back to the developer. And of course, we want to clear the, uh, the message after that and then refresh and then we are good to go. And that is how simple it is to have a really effective user feedback system, whether you want the user to actually have to click something and acknowledge or whether you want the user to just see something on screen for a temporary period of time. And it is my wish that you have much luck with your FileMaker solution development. I hope you can implement this in a very successful way and much luck to you. And until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.